Hi, and welcome to Explain It to Hope. I'm Hope Luker, and I'm here with Mike Broadhurst from the Broadhurst Group. Last week, we talked about second homes, um, figuring out what you can afford, the loan process, and how to get started. Mm -hmm. This week, we are talking about, we're continuing that conversation to talk about if I want to buy a rental home on Hilton Head, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Are there certain kind of homes that are better than others? Mm -hmm. And what kind of income could I expect from mm -hmm. that kind of investment? Well, let's answer the first question. Um, you know, what kind of home could I expect? <clears throat> I'm going to answer that in this way. The island's big, it's, you know, 17 miles from uh, the bridge down to South Beach. Um, not all homes on Hilton Head Island fall into the short-term rental market. Many of the communities actually prohibit short-term rentals. Um, so the kind of home, what kind of home? Um, typically, it will be something that is somewhere within walking distance or at least a bike ride to the beach. Um, the two, so that would be Sea Pines, Forest Beach, Palmetto Dunes, um, Bradley, uh, Birch, Singleton Beach, and Folly Field Beach. Um, once you get past that, you get to Port Royal Plantation where they don't allow you to, to rent your property. So it needs to be kind of in those areas. Um, there are two sort of exceptions to that where short-term rentals are allowed. And one would be in Harbor Town in Sea Pines, which is really not an easy bike ride or an easy walk to the beach, but it's filled with all sorts of uh, amenities, restaurants, um, uh, places to hang out, golf courses, mm -hmm. what have you. The other one is Shelter Cove in, in the Palmetto Dunes area. And that also is centered around a marina, which is very popular with lots of restaurants. So primarily, if you start looking on the internet and you're looking for a property that might lend itself to short-term rental income, um, that's where you're gonna to wanna to focus is those areas. So what about rental income? How much can you expect? You know, um, historically, if you could find a property that generated gross rentals equal to 10% of the purchase price of the property, um, that would be considered a very good rental property. So if you're buying a million dollar property, if it could generate $100,000, that would con you would consider that um, good rental income. Is that still the norm? Um, things have changed, things have changed. A lot of what has changed the rental business, um, I think, are, um, uh, VRBO, Verbo for some of you, and Airbnb. Um, that has completely changed the dynamics of the rental market. Look, if you're if you're owning a say you're owning a condo that's three hundred thousand dollars, a rental management company typically is going to take about twenty five percent of the gross income to manage your property for you. Um, now, if you have a $4 million oceanfront house that's going to generate $300,000, they'll knock a great portion of that off, 15%, 17%, maybe even 12%. I don't know. You'd go through the process of interviewing. So it depends that the amount of management fees that are charged are dependent on the gross income that's generated. How has Verbo and Airbnb changed this? Um, somebody who lives in Cincinnati can own a property at Shorewood and rent it themselves. Mm. And uh, yes, they still have to arrange for cleaning. Yes, they still have to have a management or property manager come so that if there's a broken toilet or mm -hmm. something like it can be fixed. But instead of spending 25% on management fees, now they're spending maybe $1,200 in website fees. Um, huge difference in how much you can generate in rental income. So that $100,000 that you generate on a million dollar property, really if it's managed is gonna be more like $75,000. But if you're, if you're doing it, you're probably gonna keep most of that. You're probably gonna keep 90 to $95,000 before expenses. Yeah. yeah, so two different answers to the same question. All right, well, thank you so much, Mike. I think maybe we'll do more on this next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, until then, it, I will put a link to our uh, last week's video on getting started buying your second home. And if you don't already, 
like, follow, subscribe, and we will see you next week. Thank you. So long, everybody.